Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here once again, and welcome back. I wanna do one more video here in our series here, and if you haven't seen the other videos, check them out. But this whole series is about how to set up a WordPress website and you know hosting, domain, WordPress, the whole thing in a very short amount of time. We actually did it in five minutes. And I wanna talk a little bit about refining it. Now this is the kind of pay it forward video because I'm gonna give you some, some advice based on experience that I've had that are just gonna make life easier for you. And really what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about setting up WordPress and we're also going to talk about plugins. Plugins are really cool. Plugins, are, you know, they're paid and there's a lot of free ones and so there's some really good free ones. But plugins extend uh, the abilities of what your WordPress site can do. And depending on what plugins you have, they can. it's highly customizable. And this is really cool. So if I go under, uh, let's go back into the menu. Let's go to the dashboard again. And I'm going to show you where they're located. If you go down to, on the left-hand side of the screen, there's plugins. There's a plugins menu. Let's just look and see what's installed. And I'm going to give you some essentials here and show you how to put new ones in and all that kind of thing. Uh, by default, and I think I already deleted the other one, but uh, WordPress generally comes with two plugins. There's one called Hello Dolly that does nothing. It's just <laughs> showing you you can do a plugin. And there's another one that they bundle with this. It's really important. It's called a Kismet. So if you have WordPress, this comes with WordPress. You shouldn't have to go find it. If you, for whatever reason, delete it, uh, you can go get it again. A Kismet is essential. Here's one of the problems with running a blog, and I'm just giving you this from experience that I've had over years of running WordPress blogs <clears throat> but any blog that you have people out there just because WordPress is so popular there are robots that are programmed for spam and they're trying to spam your blog and I will give you an example we just set this website up so it's really not on the spam radar yet but uh, here's my website and I just moved over this is actually um, my, my personal blog so this is blog.tedforbes.com I've had this up for a few years <coughs> pardon me and it is definitely on the spam radar. And you can see here under discussion, here's my stats. I have 335 comments, uh, 73 approved. Well, 600 and, and, excuse me, 262 of these are spam. And this is ridiculous. And I think I cleaned this out last week. So I get a lot of spam. And once your blog is up, and here's my Kismet stats, it's actually in its lifetime gotten 12,000 spam comments. This is just the fact of life with having a blog is spam. You don't want it. You don't want to deal with it. Uh, and this Akismet plugin catches spam. So this is why they're in this spam filter. They're not live on my website, which is nice because I really don't have to think about this. It just kind of quarantines them. If I want to click on spam, if you're afraid maybe something got marked as spam that wasn't, um, it'll actually um, come in here once this page loads and show me uh, what all is indeed spam. And uh, here's a couple of the spam comments now. So anyway, I can just go ahead right now and say, yeah, here they come. And you can see they're all over the place. Um, uh, you know, people trying to show you YouTube videos, people trying to sell you illegal drugs, people trying to sell you fake passports, whatever it is. And, you know, you don't want to deal with this. So the easiest thing to do um, is, is just to go in and say empty spam. And uh, you'll notice that sometimes they look like comments, but then over here it's like sending you to some website that sells, you know, appliances or something. And you know what? <laughs> you don't want to deal with it. All I have to do is say empty spam. And there's uh, several hundred in here, so it'll take a second, uh, but it'll go in and empty all of them out. And the cool thing is, is like you really don't even have to pay attention to this because it quarantines them, so they're not live on your website. It's pretty easy to deal with. So let's go back over to the website we're working with right now. There, You do need to get uh, an Akismet API key if you don't have one, and there's a link here on how to do it. And then the Akismet configuration, you can go in there and actually um, put that API key in, and Akismet will work. Um, you only need to sign up for one API key if you're going to keep several blogs. I have a bunch of websites and I use the same API key on all of them. And it really does make that much easier. The other thing you can do is to set this up for some mild moderation. And this is the default setting I use, but I'll show you what it is. If you go under settings and I'm going to go under discussion and uh, we'll go ahead and go in there. Um, down here under it says, you know, you can have it email you anytime somebody posts a comment or one is helpful for moderation. I have this set up, so, you know, if somebody comments, that's fine. And the next one, it says, before a comment appears, comment author must have a previously approved comment. So this means that if you've never left a comment on my blog before, the first time you do so, it will email me before it will put that on the page. And it says, hey, you want to approve it or say no. And so once I've approved your first comment, then you can start commenting and it won't bother me and it won't bother you. It'll just post it up, uh, which is kind of nice to have. Um, a kismet will bypass this first one. It won't email you every time a spam comment comes in. So again, it keeps your email box clean. It's just a godsend as far as plug plugins go. So um, a kismet is a must and, and I, I can't really recommend that enough. You just wait. Even if you're not getting a lot of hits, you'll get the robot hits for the spam. So 
you know, head that off at the pass, make sure Kismet is set up. Go get your API key, plug it in. Um, a couple other things that I can show you. Let's go back to installed plugins. I can add new plugins if I want, and that menu is over here on the left. And uh, I'll show you uh, another couple things that you might want to consider. And let's say add new. Um, one that's really good that I like, you can search plugins. Now you can go over to WordPress's site and just browse. There are thousands of plugins and there's some good stuff. Uh, there's one called Google XML Sitemap, so let's search for that, Google uh, XML Sitemap. So let's spell Google right. Uh, let's just say Google Sitemap. And let's say search plugins, and it will go to the WordPress repository and will give me everything. And the first one that comes up is the Google Sitemap plugin. And uh, I think this is indeed the one I want. Actually, no, it's not. Um, the one you want is down here. It's Google XML Sitemaps. These all kind of do the same thing, but this is the one that I use and that I recommend. Um, you can look at details. Let's just say install now. And yes, I am sure I want to install this plugin, and it'll take just a second. Boom, done. And what I want to do is go activate plugin. You can upload these manually if you want to do it that way, but you know I don't. And we have activated it. Um, and what this allows us to do is you don't really see anything that it's done. But if you read the description, this plugin will generate a special XML sitemap, which will help search engines like Google, Yahoo, Bing, and Ask.com better index your blog. Once this is installed and activated, what it does is it creates a file on the web server. And you don't see this file necessarily unless you go looking for it. Uh, but basically what it is is it's just XML, which is a code, and it basically gives you a sitemap. So it'll index all of your pages, and it puts them in one handy little document. So this makes it easier for search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing, or even Ask. Uh, when, they, when they go to your site to crawl it, they will look for this sitemap, and it makes indexing and making things get on indexed in Google so people can find your site much easier. And so I highly recommend the Google XML sitemaps plugin. It's a good one. Um, and then also every time you add a new blog post or a page or a portfolio, it will update that sitemap automatically. So this is really, you just install it once and then you can kind of forget, forget about it. So um, another one that I like to do, uh, say add new, and this is a little bit optional and we'll do some more podcasts in the future on how to optimize your website for search engines and start to get traffic and this is just a little preview to that because both these plugins deal with this there's another one called all in one seo and i really like this plugin a lot and i will show you what it does so let's say search plugins this will allow you to have a little bit more control over what happens with seo and it's actually the search engine is a little crazy it's the fifth one down this all in one seo pack this is exactly what i want so let's say install now and yes, I am sure I want to install this plugin. And we'll go ahead and install it. Let's say activate plugin. And it's going to activate it. And uh, it's going to say, hey, you need to go to the admin page. There is a paid version of this plugin. I have actually never used the paid version. Um, the pro version, I imagine, it adds some more functionality, but you know the free one does everything I need it to do. So what you need to do is go down here and where it says plugin status, you need to say enable the status. And I can start modifying this. So the home title, I can change the description, the keywords, all that stuff. And in fact, I recommend you go fill this out. You do need to go all the way down to the bottom and say update options. And one other thing you might want to have in here, let's scroll back down again, is that I want to be able to add custom search engine stuff to post types, custom post types. And remember, there's project in here too. So if I hold down the shift key and select all three of those, it'll make sure that my projects or my portfolios, because we're using that hero theme, that they get included too, which is fine. Uh, you can play with these on your own. Uh, I won't go through all of them. So let's say update options. And I'll show you what's changed now. Let's go back into projects. And let's go find that project that we built. Here's our portfolio. Let's say edit. Now when I go into the edit screen, um, you will notice if you scroll down to the bottom, there is now another little uh, tab in here for this all-in-one SEO pack. This allows me to customize the title of this blog post. It allows me to customize the description. And it allows me to do my keywords. Now, what Google will do when it indexes a web page is it pulls the title from whatever the title you, you named it was. If you want something else here, fill this out. By default, it will go find that. For description in any Google search result, it will go grab, um, basically here, I'll, I'll show you. Let's open up a new window and let's just Google myself, uh, Ted Forbes. 
Okay, so what it does is it puts a description in here. And so when you see my name come up, it says specializing in motion graphics design and interactive media. That's actually a custom one because by default, what it does is it goes and grabs the first, I don't know, 100 characters of text in the web page. And that might be weird. And the first X number of characters might not describe what that page is about. So this all in one SEO pack allows me to go in, and here's my description. Now, I have a bunch of Greek copy in here now, and I'm probably, if I were serious about that, would be describing the images. But maybe I could go in here and say, uh, this is a portfolio of images, of street images, photographed around the world by Ted Forbes. And then it will go and put the right metadata. And let's go ahead and let's say uh, social documentary images. I won't be able to show you this because Google hasn't indexed the site yet, but, and then I can go put some keywords in here too, and this will help Google a little bit too. Um, I would not just throw billions in here because basically search engines rely a lot less on this these days, but the option is here, and so I usually put them in. So let's say photographs, um, street, I don't like that term, as you know, but uh, street photography but it might be something somebody is using to search. So I could put it here. Street photography, black and white. Um, awesomeness, I don't know. We'll be cocky there. And then what I could do is we want, to, don't disable it. Um, you gotta go back to the top and let's say update and we are updated. Now what's kind of cool is if I go back into my projects list here, um, the all-in-one SEO pack added some columns here. So I can at a glance, this, this is helpful when you have a lot of portfolios in here, I can see what I've modified for the search engine optimization, which is what SEO stands for in case I haven't said that. Um, but anyway, this is very useful and this is very good um, if you're um, serious about being indexed correctly in Google so that you can get traffic to your blog. And we will do some more videos on this, um, but I think this is enough to mention to kind of, you know, uh, whet your appetite right now. So anyway, but that's that's how plugins work. And, you know, like I said, you can go to the WordPress website and kind of browse them that way, or you can browse them right from in the WordPress backend here. But these are the three that I really recommend. I put all three of these on every website I've got. Um, there's some others that are pretty cool too, and you can experiment and try your own. Uh, most of them have ratings and comments. So if you want to see if they were useful to other people, um, it'll put warnings on there if a plugin hasn't been app updated in two years you know um, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this too is you know this is all free these are all people that just do this to keep their coding chops up and and because they love to do it or maybe they use it on their own blog and they share it so it's it's a very democratic very cool way of uh, of uh, you know having a community for web design but anyway that's how plugins work and uh, I showed you a couple settings and basically that's how you get a portfolio website set up and going in a very quick amount of time you know you can get your actual portfolio set up and as I showed you five minutes and uh, you know hosting domain the whole thing and uh, you know spend a weekend on it you can get tweaked and uh, you know we'll, we'll do some more series on this because I want to talk about how to get eyes on your website and how you can track how many people are looking at your website and all that but that's really a different topic and we will um, I will do that in the coming weeks so anyway you got any questions or anything um, you know you can find me on Facebook facebook.com slash Ted Forbes you can find me on Twitter twitter.com slash Ted Forbes Google me. Um, there's many ways to get in touch. So anyway, I hope you found this useful and, you know, start your website, get it going, find a theme you like. Um, I really recommend that, that theme trust stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's quite good and get your work out there so people can see it. And, uh, you know, I didn't do much to this, but you can already see that this is starting to look like a pretty cool little black and white website. I might want to put some color in there in the text or something to brighten it up, but you know, it can be done. It can be done quickly. So anyway, I hope you found this useful and thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.